nice to see, and we are expecting quite a few more. So yeah, let's wait for things to fill up. Lovely to have all the people here from Codex Cafe. Great to see you all. And great to see everyone else as well. A lot of new names here. Well, I mean, we've got a lot of new people joining the company as well. Gene is expanding really fast. I can't keep track. So yeah, wow. Now the question is, do I want to welcome you all by name and butcher them? I mean, if you want me to butcher your names, speak out in the chat. Maybe I'll take requests later if we get time. Because, wow. You know, everyone usually has trouble with my surname, Kiriton Griffiths, but yeah, this is really nice. A lot of names I haven't seen before. I don't want to play Scrabble against you people. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Okay. One more until we begin. Yes, and we are. Oh. Uh, the checkered flag has fallen. We've hit 80 people. I think this is a record. Thank you all so much for being here. Welcome to another edition of Gina AI's Engineering All Hands. This is your first time here. Welcome, welcome. If it's not your first time here, well, welcome again. It's good to have you back. So uh, Engineering All Hands is where we welcome members of the community and experts in their field to give a talk about hardcore technical topics. And we'll also hear from what people at Gina are working on uh, some of the cool new stuff in the pipeline. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A, or if you're on YouTube, I guess that's there or there. I don't know, on the side of your screen somewhere. Uh, we'll answer the questions um, either on the fly or at the end of each talk. We'll see how it goes. We'll play it by ear. Usually what we do here. So um, yeah, first up, I'd like to welcome Yoshka. Uh, he is going to talk to you all about Gina Now, a cool new project that we've been working on for a while. And yeah, over to you, Yoshka. Thank you, Alex. Yes, so we've been working on Gina Now, which has been recently launched. And the idea is to just make your search case as easy as possible without knowing too much about Gina or AI. So you just give like the local, like your data and we make it searchable and index it for you and provide an, uh, a front end and also an API you can call to um, use your own front end, maybe for example. And we already have deployed in the Gina um, examples page um, a data set. So you can go to examples.gina.ai slash now and we have um, prepared for you the like a painting data set and you can, for example, search for pop art. And so you see here now um, Marilyn Monroe in a pop art style. And I believe there's also um, a soup can also in the pop art style. You can you can search for that and then you see the, the pictures to that. And so we can also maybe challenge the AI system a bit by um, searching for a life full of joy. And then we see also still like some decent results, which is which is good. So um, if you want to make your own image data searchable, you can just launch Gina now and then give a path to your local folder, which contains all kinds of image data. And we take care of like the deployment of the Gina flow and everything else. And then in the most recent Gina version, we changed the front end a little bit and I've launched it here on the local my, my local machine. And you can search with images, text in the webcam. And you can also search in your custom text data. And yeah, here I've launched a pre-configured indie lyrics data set. And let's try the new webcam feature out. So we can just start the webcam. By the way, can you see my screen? Okay, great. Let's take a snapshot and see what kind of indie lyrics we'll find. Okay, so this is a nice AI, just like picking up on smiles and glasses. What we can also, for example, take an input image, for example, this cool dog and see what kind of indie lyrics we have. And 
indeed it's this dog feels pretty cool and it should go to this discotheque for dogs so um there's more things in the pipeline for example um, sebastian is working on making music searchable while we're working on going fully um cloud native so like the the front end and the API are deployed through the cloud. And we also add the possibility to host your flow through Gina. So currently you can deploy it locally or through Google Cloud. And then you don't even need um, like a Google Cloud computing account. So you can just like use Gina and make it very easy for you. Um, if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask. Or I think there's like a, I think a link in the chat. Or you can also. Um, ask some for some uh, search modalities you want to have in the future because we have like more things planned like maybe for example a 3d search or searching within um images and text at the same time but there's like endless possibilities so if you have, if you have any um requests or priorities this will help us greatly i see we've got one queue already uh what was the motivation behind gina now the idea is that we realize there are many, like there are many patterns um, behind like uh, deploying different search cases, and so we just picked up on those patterns and like those um, best practices we have accumulated to make it as easy as possible for you to just like have some like data or maybe you want to like search some NFTs for example, and you can just like provide the link to those NFTs and make it searchable. And we also have so um, a pre-configured NFT uh, collection. You can search if you want to check it out. You can even right click save if that's your cup of tea as well. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we have another question. Uh, oh no, we don't. That was the same question. It still popped up the notification. Okay, um, do we provide any business cooperation? Is another question that just came up. Um, uh, I would Oh, sorry, go ahead, Yoshka. Yeah, I guess you can like use this for your business case. Um, I mean, it's a question if it's like limited to Gina now, like you can always use this for your, for your business case. And then especially if like, you can like use maybe like the API to like incorporate the search results in your own custom front end. For example, if you have like an e-commerce case, this would be maybe interesting for that or like um, any other right, like modalities to search basically. Exactly, Gina now is great for, getting running with like zero effort, no lines of code. It's just a couple of CLI commands. And one of those is pip install Gina now. And then, yeah, you can run it all. You can get your own search engine up and running in under half an hour. Mine took 27 minutes for a fashion search. I timed it. Um, and then if you want to go beyond that and include lots of metadata and stuff in your search and really customize it, then you can use you know, the whole Gina ecosystem that we've built up, like Docker A, Gina Core, Fine Tuner to go the last mile. Uh, if you want to see like an example of something more complex, you can go to examples.gina.ai slash fashion. Um, and that lets you search with text or images, um, similar to Gina now in a fashion data set, it returns metadata like season, like price, rating. You can filter by all of these, so it provides faceted search. And it's all open source. You can clone it. You can plug in your own data set and get up and running. Is Gina a framework or any different field related to AI? So anyone want to take that? Or I can. Okay, so um, Gina Core is a framework for building neural search engines. Uh, but beyond that, we have the Gina ecosystem as well. Uh, that includes loads of stuff like Docker A, which is a data structure for unstructured data. So if you're a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, and you know, neural search is too much for you right now. It's not what you're looking at, but you are looking at a great format to use for your data science applications. Docker A is great for that. As I said, Fine Tuner will let you go the extra mile, fine tune your model for the best performance in your domain. Because if you take the average image search model, it's just as good at searching fashion as it is at searching puppies, as it is at searching teapots. For the last mile, you'd want something great for your 
own domain like e-commerce. And then we've got other things like Clip as Service, which generates clip embeddings for image and text search. It's a microservice, so it's not quite a framework in itself. And of course, Gina Now, which is an out of the box, no code solution for building your own search engines in no time at all. And stay tuned for everything else we've got in the pipeline. So yeah, all related to AI. Any other questions? All right, perfect, thanks very much. Uh, now, without further ado, over to our special guest speaker, Bashir, who's going to speak about using Gina to do pet classification. All right, thank you, Alex, and hi, everyone. Uh, I will talk about pet breed classification. But first of all, I'd like to introduce myself and uh, say the reason why I did this project. So I'm a deep learning researcher at Helmholtz Herion in Hamburg. Uh, but from time to time, I also like to contribute to open source and also play around with some cool projects and tools that's out there. Um, so for this, um, I would like to share my screen first. All right, so, um, so this project started with this uh, GitHub issue uh, and it was about uh, giving uh, an input image to a model and trying to find out what breed it uh, belongs to. So given an image of a cat or a dog, you would want to find out its breed. And uh, for the data set, it was suggested uh, by some user on GitHub uh, that I should use uh, the Oxford pet data set. It has uh, images of uh, cats and dogs uh, with annotations for their, for their breed categories. Um, and there are about uh, 37 categories of uh, these uh, pet breeds and also around 200 images for each of those categories. Um, there are around 12 categories for cats and 25 for dogs. So I uh, used PyTorch to train uh, a, a classifier uh, in order to take an input image and find out its breed. And then um, I continued with Gina in order to do the, to do the rest. Uh, to build a backend and front end for it. So the general process uh, for most apps um, with Gina is to use an already created executor or create your own executor and then build a backend and front end for it. So what's an executor? An executor is a process, an executor processes uh, document arrays to perform some specific tasks. And it's a class that subclasses directly from Gina executor and uh, it could have any number of functions and functions decorated by the app request will be invoked according to their own uh, equals endpoint. And uh, in this talk, I will talk about uh, how I created an executor myself because I didn't find uh, uh, one already at Gina hub. So I had to create my own executor because of that. And also because I wanted to learn how to create an executor and play around with it. Uh, so this is uh, Gina Hub. Uh, there are a lot of cool executors out there, but I, I tried to create my own. And um, I'll try to go through it uh, from the beginning. So if you have already uh, Gina installed in your system, uh, you are good to go. But otherwise, as Alex said, you could just call, you could just type git install Gina, and then uh, it will install Gina for you. Uh, is the font size for my terminal uh, clear enough? Okay, thank you. Uh, so here I'm uh, the directory that I created. It's an empty directory called Gina. Uh, where I want to create an executor. 
So if you say Gina help new, uh, it will try to create an executor and first asks you ask you for the name of the executor. So for me, it was pet read classifier, and it will just save uh, the necessary files in this pet read classifier folder. For now, I'm not going to go through the advanced configuration. I will just say no to that. So it automatically creates some necessary files uh, to start with. And if you see, you can see that uh, it created the pet breed classifier folder. And if you try to see the content of that, you could see the configuration files, the manifest requirements, and some readme uh, file. But the most important one is the executor.py that you want to uh, edit uh, specific to your own um, customized task. So for now, our task is to uh, take an input image and find out its breed. So here's the file. That was automatically created. Um, uh, Padbridge classifier class that subclasses from the Gina executor. And it has um, a function uh, that you have to edit for your own task. Um, for us, it will be classifier. So uh, this function will take uh, as argument uh, docs, which is a document array. Uh, that's already uh, imported from Gina here. That will be the type. But this docs uh, that we will give to this function will be uh, an image of a, a cat. Um, more specifically, it will be a NumPy array of the image of a cat or a dog that we want to find out uh, what breed it belongs to. Uh, so for this, once we take this image, uh, inside this document array, we would like to give it to a model and try to find out its breed. Um, I have already trained the, uh, the classification, uh, the classifier model. I saved the model weights uh, on GitHub. And here I will try to um, create the model again and then download the pre-trained weights uh, to do some classification. But I'm not going to go through uh, creating the model and downloading the weights uh, and everything. So that will be the deep learning part. I'm not going to go through that. But I will just go through the 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 parts that mostly involved uh, Gina. So first of all, uh, I will try to. I will try to create uh, the model uh, and uh, import the weights uh, from the tree that I have pre-trained already uh, using PyTorch. So you will need uh, Torch and Torch Vision. Um, and here you will have to give as a parameter the pre-trained weights link. Uh, to the model that uh, I had already trained. But uh, as I said, I'm not going to go through this part. Um, I will just mostly focus on this function. Uh, this function here, which involves Gina mostly. So for this part, I'm just going to copy paste uh, from. Okay. 
I'll shortly explain what I just did here. So here I have a pre-trained weights uh, argument, which links to the pre-trained model weights that uh, is already available on GitHub that it will try to download. Also, some other necessary parameters. Okay, I have to give the number of breeds also in order for this to work. All right. So here is the pre-trained model weights and the number of breeds uh, is 37 because there were 37 categories. Uh, here I am creating the, uh, the classification model, torch vision models uh, using ResNet. Uh, the original ResNet pre-trained on image uh, net data had, 30, had a thousand categories, but for, for us, it's only 37, so we have to modify the final uh, fully connected layer. Sorry if this part is uh, boring you because this is mostly the deep learning part, uh, but just to have an idea, I'll just go through them shortly. So once you create the model, uh, you try to modify the final fully connected layer uh, in order to produce uh, 37 outputs rather than a thousand uh, categories uh, that the model was originally trained with. And then um, I have already trained the model separately. So here it will try to download uh, and load the model weights uh, from GitHub um, using this function already here. And uh, once, it, once I take the image, I have to uh, pre-process it and make it ready for uh, being input, being given as input to the model uh, in order to find out its breed. So my deep learning model would uh, give me uh, probabilities for each image. And uh, um, I have this dictionary in order to um, uh, find uh, the corresponding label for each of those uh, numbers output by the model. So I will map uh, the predicted class to these uh, categories here. Okay, so that was the, the deep learning part, but here, let's say we have already uh, taken um, the image uh, in a document array. So, once we have uh, an image array of a path in, in an NumPy array, we will try to pass it um, like this, for example. Um, tensor equals to the image array of the uh, path. So this will be our, our doc that will be uh, passed as input later on. This is just to have an idea of what we are working with. And then once we have that, then we'll go through uh, using that trained and loaded model in order to find the breed. So, so here, first of all, sorry. We have to use uh, such inference because we have already trained the model and uh, we want to use the torch inference mode and not the trained mode. And we'll have to go through our uh, document array. And then, uh, 
the image will be passed as a doc.tensor to this function. And we want to uh, first pre-process that image before giving it to our uh, classifier model. So the doc.tensor that was passed for, uh, in this doc area will be um, first pre-processed. Uh, and this pre-processing just means that um, it will first transform it to uh, an RGB image. It will resize it so that um, because every image will have different size and then it will crop it to 224 by 224 pixels. Uh, and finally, it will also normalize it. Otherwise, uh, our model would not be able to classify it well. So once we have that, uh, we will also have to uh, add a batch dimension to it. So for example, an image uh, that we will have uh, in here, it will be of the, of the shape three by uh, 224 by 224, but we but we need it to be uh, in a batch. So we did something like this after we call this function. And once this is ready, we have already created our model uh, above and uh, loaded the pre-trained weights. So uh, in that case, we will just give, um, we will just call uh, our model on this uh, input image. Uh, this will give us uh, 37 outputs, but in order to um, convert it to probabilities, we'll have to uh, do some other um, post-processing. So that means we'll have to call uh, the softmax function on this. So this will just uh, squash all those uh, 37 outputs uh, in the range of zero to one. And then uh, that would mean that the probabilities, uh, that the index uh, with the highest probability uh, indicates uh, which, uh, which breed the input image uh, or, or which breed uh, the given path belongs to. So we have that. In order to get uh, the probability and also uh, the corresponding category, we will we'll try to get uh, the maximum uh, probability of the given output. Uh, now we have uh, our probability and category, and we have to add this to our doc uh, to our document, and then give it back uh, so that. Um, Whichever function call, whichever uh, function calls this uh, executor, will have this information available for that. But this uh, category is uh, just a number, an index. So we'll have to use this dictionary in order to map it to uh, a meaningful uh, category for our cats or dogs. So that means uh, our uh, original category will be category name will be uh, self dot class to breed. And if the predicted category is here, it will change uh, the category name will have uh, the corresponding category. And then we could give this back uh, or we could store it in uh, this document. So when we have been given this document, it only contains the input uh, image as a tensor, uh, but we can also save some other information to this 
document using some other attributes uh, and the document uh, you know document object uh, has uh, an attribute called tags so we'll just um, uh, save this information in that so doc the tags um, just like a dictionary um, it will have key value pairs so we'll just uh, call this um, table it will be category name and then we will also want to uh, store the information of how sure the model is so what's the probability with which the model predicted that this image belongs to this category so we'll just save the probability also so once we have done this um this given doc uh, this given document will not only have that tensor uh, which will be the numpy array of the given uh, pet image it will also have this um, breed category and also uh, the predicted probability um, for the corresponding image that whoever calls this will be able to use so once you have this uh, executor created you can use uh, you can push it to gina hub and use it there or you could just use it locally right now um, I have pushed this already to Gina Hub, but I will try to show you um, how we can call this locally. So if we go to our, our terminal here, You can see that uh, this Patrick classifier. Inside that, there are uh, other files, but also the executor.py that we just uh, edited for our task. Um, I'm just going to use IPython to call this. So uh, I have, um, as I said, you can use it locally or you could first push it to Gina Hub and then use it like this. Um, this will be the name of uh, your executor that we just created. Uh, so in order to use it locally, yeah, first we'll try to import the document and flow. And then uh, we will have to read uh, an image of a pet. So we'll also try to import the image library. So import image. And then um, I have already downloaded some uh, image some images for uh, two different pets here. So one is uh, a Siamese cat and also a Shiva Inu, these two different pets with two different categories. And I will just try to read it. This is the correct path. This desktop images. Thank you. 
So uh, we're going to read the image of a Shiba Inu. And then convert it to a NumPy, NumPy array. You can see that it's of the shape 675 to 1200 pixels. And then um, we will try to uh, prepare this as a document object uh, before calling it, before calling our executor. So our document object will be a document. As I said, uh, the document object will have multiple um, uh, attributes. One is uh, a tensor uh, attribute, which will be uh, the image array that we just created. And then, uh, as I explained in the code, we could uh, then we could use the tags attribute in order to store the predicted probability and the predicted label for this given uh, pet image. So once we have that. Then we have to create uh, a flow. So what flow, uh, what Gino uh, flow does is um, it uses one or multiple executors in order to uh, take an uh, object and pro process them uh, in order to uh, solve some task. So we'll create it. We'll, we will create our flow. Um, so if you're using it locally, that means um, the configuration file for your executor will be stored uh, in the config.yml file of your executor that was automatically created uh, when you called Gina Hub new. So it will use executor information from that. And then uh, we can use this. Uh, th then we can use this flow in order to pass our uh, document object with the image path, with the image of the path, and then uh, uh, take a response. So here I'm calling uh, uh, my executor, giving this doc as input, and when I get a response, I try to print. Uh, the tags for uh, this doc that was created. Uh, and stored uh, using that executor previously. So as you can see here, um, even though our image was uh, 675 to 1200, our executor first tried to uh, pre-process that, uh, pre-process the image and convert it to 224 by 224 pixels and then give it to our pre-trained model and um, store the predicted probability and uh, the corresponding uh, predicted label uh, in, in this tags um, attribute of our document that we, can, that we have just printed here. So this would just mean that the model is 95% sure that uh, this given image belongs to uh, a Shiba Inu dog. We could also try to read um, the, an image of a cat, a Siamese cat, and uh, convert it to an array, see what's the size of this image. And then create our document array, our document object um, using this new image, and then again call uh, to predict the probability and label for for this. 
So as we can see, the image was a Siamese cat, the predicted label is Siamese, and the predicted prob it it's with a probability of 42%. So this is how you would call an executor um, uh, on your uh, local machine. But if you want to, um, if you want to, you could also push it to Gino Hub, and then whenever you want to use, instead of creating a flow uh, using this line, you could just say uh, you could just create your flow using. Um, the name of your uh, executor and um, a prefix of Gino Hub, and it will perform the same. So once you have this executor, uh, either on your local machine or uh, using Gino Hub, you could build a backend uh, for your uh, application or system, and also a front end uh, and deploy it somewhere. Uh, here, um, so this will be uh, an example where I have used uh, the deployed uh, or the executor from Gina Hub uh, in a backend. So it's just uh, it's just a file with these uh, many number of lines to create the, my backend and. As we can see here, so I, um, as a uh, backend, um, I have used the Streamlit uh, library in order to create this. Um, So you, you just call, uh, uh, you just create a flow using uh, the link to the Gino Hub and also the name of your uh, executor that you push to Gino Hub. Um, and this will be ready for uh, your front end uh, to send requests to every time it wants to classify uh, the breed of a given pet. So once you have this file ready, you will go to So you will go to uh, where your backend file is created and then you will just start this. So now our backend is ready and we could call, uh, uh, we could send post requests uh, to this using um, or giving uh, input images uh, from any path whose breed that we, whose breed we want to find out. And as a front end, okay, yes. So this is a front end uh, using a uh, streamlet. Uh, first of all, we'll try to uh, create a header, generate pet breed classification. And then um, we will have to create an upload cell where we want to upload our given image. And once we have uploaded our image, uh, it will read that and uh, try to send a post request uh, to our backend and uh, classify or find out its breed. So here, this will be uh, our upload cell. And once uh, an image is uploaded, so if query, that means if an image is already uploaded, um, and also if you have already clicked a classify button, it will try to pass the given image, the uploaded image to this get breed function right here. And um, 
first of all, it will try to uh, start a Gina client uh, object right here uh, using the given uh, configuration. Uh, it will try to read the image and uh, like we did before, it will try to uh, read the image, create a NumPy array of uh, the given image, then create a document uh, object uh, with the tensor being this uh, NumPy array. And then it will try to send a post request to our backend. Uh, and the response as uh, explained already, it will have, um, and for each uh, doc, each document object uh, in that response will have uh, the probability and also the predicted breed uh, stored in this tags object here, and tags attribute here. And then once we have the tags, uh, we can also try to pass the given uh, the predicted probability and also the uploaded image to this uh, extra helper function that will just try to visualize or show the image and also uh, print the predicted probability for it. So once we have that uh, front end already ready, uh, all right. We'll try to, since the backend is already running. Um, so we will try to run our uh, front end. Activate my uh, Conda environment in engineering all hands. And then let run. Which will open a browser um, where we have uh, the option to upload our images. So if we give this the same uh, image, which we tried locally, it's uploaded. And then once we click classify, it will try to visual, it will try to show the uh, image and also uh, show uh, the predicted probability and also uh, the category for the given image. We could also try to, do the same for another and see. And you can see that uh, it's with 96% probability is predicted to be a Shina, Shiba Inu dog, which is uh, what it is actually. So I tried to talk about how I created an executor uh, and then um, tried to show you that you could use your executor locally Excuse me. Or you could push it to Gina Hub and uh, build a backend and frontend for it uh, in order to uh, to use it using Gina Hub. And sorry if my screens look like a mess, <laughs> but um, thank you for listening. That's uh, that's all from my side. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bashir. That was such a good talk. <laughs> and it's always nice to see pictures of cute, fluffy animals, too. That's what motivated me the most. <laughs> <laughs> well, as motivations go, it's a good one that I think we can all agree on. The world needs more fluffy animals. Okay, do we have any questions for Bashir? I'll start with one. Is there any breed of animal that it really didn't work well with? Um, I didn't uh, find a breed of animal for which it didn't work well, but I tried to uh, give uh, my own pictures and see <laughs> what it does. 
And uh, I guess when it sees an image where there's no far, it just tries to predict it as a sphinx cat. So no matter whose image or whose picture you will give, it will try to say it's a sphinx cat. <laughs> Interesting. That's really cute. And it, it makes sense. Yes. <laughs> Okay, looks like we've got a queue. Is it similar to Google Lens? Asks, I'm going to kill your name, sorry, Prona. So um, is it similar to Google Lens? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tried Google Lens. So Google Lens is um, like Google Assistant on your phone. You can press a button and it'll open the viewfinder. And it'll see what's in your viewfinder and tell you what it is. Like this is a blackbird or this is a magpie or whatever. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess Google uh, Lens is a classifier or it has a classifier built in, but for a much wider range of things. Um, I mean, you That's could right. train a classifier for lots of stuff. They already exist. They're already out there. I believe ResNet does that, though. I haven't used it for that. Yes, so ResNet already try, is already able to classify images uh, for up to 1,000 uh, categories or any other uh, deep learning models uh, that are already trained on ImageNet that are available there. But here, um, I specifically trained it to um, classified to 37 categories that I showed in this talk. Exactly. Yeah, so if, if it's not, not an image of a pet, it wouldn't work because no matter what image you will give, it will try to uh, predict it to the most resembling category of pet. <laughs> I mean, why, why would you even want to classify anything else except cute fluffy animals? <laughs> Weird people here, man. Okay, cool. Thank you, Prona. But, oh, and she says it was really interesting to hear you, Bashir. Oh, thank you. Um, but yeah, you can build your own Google Lens equivalent with Gina. It's yes. <laughs> with the Streamlit front end and the webcam capability and just using uh, like ResNet, yeah, you could easily build something similar to what Bashir has built, uh, but for like a thousand categories of thing. Definitely. When I tried to start with this project, um, I, I didn't uh, come across the fine tuner, uh, which was uh, also uh, built by Gina. Uh, I don't know if I didn't come across to it or it wasn't out uh, at that time. But yes, you can use Fine Tuna, I guess, to uh, customize a pre-trained model on any other task that you want to uh, perform with images. Exactly. If you're building an e-commerce search, you want to train your model, a fashion e-commerce search, you want to train your model on shirts, jeans, dresses, shoes, yada, yada, yada not teapots and puppies and Hello Kitty and whatever. And Fine Tuner lets you do just that. Okay. I'm looking forward to building one, got a lot of project ideas today. Oh, fantastic, Prerna. Uh, if you, everyone, if you're interested in building a thing with Gina, uh, join our Slack, slack.gina.ai. We've got the learning portal, learn.gina.ai, where you can pick up the skills. And of course, you can plow into our docs as well, because who doesn't love reading through documentation? All right. I Thanks. think there's a question asking uh, how easy it is to customize the looks of the front end if one wants to do that. I think it's, it's pretty easy. I tried to uh, create my front end uh, based on or another uh, example that's already available. Um, but yeah, using Streamlit as a front end, you could customize it any way you want. <laughs> Which example was it, Bashir? Do you remember? 
Um, I think it was the fashion MNIST example. Um, I think so. There, I tried a few, I tried a mix of different uh, examples in order to customize my own. <laughs> Man, yeah, I built the uh, fashion search example, including the front end. But the way I learned Streamlit was taking someone else's front end and tearing mm -hmm. that apart and just hacking away until I finally understood it without meaning to learn Streamlit. But yeah. it's just, if you already know Python, I, I my HTML, JavaScript, all of that is terrible. My Python, yeah, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so Streamlit is fantastic if you're using Python. It's very intuitive. Yes. And I use it for any front end that I build. If you're looking to build something more for production, if you're building the next Amazon, you'd probably want to build something with like a real JavaScript framework and proper HTML, CSS. But if you're prototyping, Streamlit is amazing. Yes, definitely. Every time I try uh, to play around with some cool project or um, create a simple web app, I just use Streamlit. And also there are many possibilities to deploy it online for free. Uh, it's pretty cool. Not only that, but mm -hmm. uh, you can deploy a lot of Gina stuff already online for free as well. Yes. Shameless <laughs> self-plug. So... Uh, <laughs> Earlier, Bashi was talking about uh, Gina Hub. So Gina Hub colon slash slash pet breed classifier. That'll pull everything from Gina Hub so you don't need to write the code. Thank and you. it'll run on your machine. But if you do Gina Hub plus sandbox, blah, 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 it'll all run on the Gina cloud and provide the results without using any of your local compute. And that's really handy if you're using big models that take a lot of work. Or if you don't like frying eggs on your computer. Yeah. yeah, I just want to say that when I was working on this project, I think that was uh, around the time that uh, the new uh, Gino version was being prepared and uh, the documentations were quite messy. I would not be able to find how to create an execute, how to push. Uh, I would click on some link and it would just say the web, the page doesn't exist. But um, when I was preparing uh, for this session, I saw and everything is clear. The documentations are amazing. And on one hand, I wish it was already available at the time when I was preparing. But on the other hand, I think it made me learn even more. So <laughs> it's good. Oh, yeah. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's <laughs> lots more in the pipeline that we'll be announcing at future events. Um, same Gina time, same Gina channel. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, more questions or comments or feedback. What do we got? How easy it is to customize front end? Whoa, lots of new messages. Uh, thank you for the great session, learned a lot, great talk, truly insightful. Oh, thanks everyone. Well, I mean, Bashir should be saying thanks. You know, I'm just the, Thank Pretty you. Thanks for presenting. <laughs> uh, do we have anything from YouTube? I saw some lovely comments there um, from Sniper. Always nice to have a sniper in your corner. Um, if you want to contribute to Gina, what kind of processes do you have to go through? Uh, I'd say join our Slack. We've got a load of good first issues on our GitHub, a dedicated repo called Good First Issues. That's where I got mine. <laughs> oh, perfect. See, <laughs> you can be the next Bashir. Bashir 2.0 could be you. So, yeah, learn.gina.ai is a great way to get up and running. And you don't need any machine learning or AI background, though it's certainly cool, like Bashir has it. But like when I started out with Gina, I didn't really have any AI background. I piddled around with PyTorch a bit, but nothing real. But with Gina Hub, you don't need to worry about it. You can just download all those models, all the utility things you need to, let's say you're working with PDFs and you want to extract the text and the images. There's an executor for that. All right, do we have any more?
Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. Uh, so what do you have in mind for other projects, Bashir, or for the future of your pet breed classifier? So, well, basically, uh, in this project, my goal was to learn about the GINA um, ecosystem, or all the tools that are available there. Um, if you think about it, it's not really the original intent for GINA, because it will be, it's actually a neural search engine, but I just used my own trained uh, model and uh, built a backend and front end for it using GINA. But uh, yes, I would like to try uh, other projects where I don't have to train my own model using my own resources, but uh, I use the already existing executors and try to, um, I don't know, do some actual search engine type task. But uh, as you said, as I said earlier, this good first issues is still on my mind and I'll try to see what's next. <laughs> yeah, if you want to build a Gina example like Bashir did, we have a lot of good first issues for those, like an NFT search engine, uh, lots of other stuff. Graffiti search engine would be really cool now that I come to think of it. And while living in Berlin, we see a lot of that. Um, I was going to say something else, but it's completely gone from my mind. All uh, right, other stuff from YouTube. Oh, Sniper says, man, I love Gina, makes life easier. It sure does, it sure does. Oh yes, that reminds me of the thing I was going to say. One of the things I like about Gina is that, yes, it's a neural search framework and really good for that. But really, you can throw anything into the pipeline and get pretty much anything out. Uh, we've seen examples that just do text to speech so you can throw that into a notebook. Don't even have to write a front end. Don't even have to use your terminal. Do it all in a notebook. And you can do text to speech there. You can generate images there. You can do all kinds of stuff. And there's lots more info on that in our Slack. So if you want to build the next Magic the Gathering and play around with images, yeah, Gina can do that. It's not built for it, but it can do it. All right, I think that's everything. I believe we have a survey uh, for people to fill in after the event. So if you could fill that in, that would be fantastic. We've got uh, other upcoming events, of course. If you go, if you Google Gina Meetup, uh, you will see those. So the next one we've got is our office hours uh, on May the 17th. That's a week from now, that's at 4 p.m. CET. So that is convenient for our friends in India and China, I believe. Our office hours are where you can come. You can ask questions about your use case. You can present your use case, talk to our engineers, share a beer with us, share a cup of tea with us, share whatever you want with us. Uh, we run them twice a month. Uh, one at a good time for the USA and one at a convenient time for China and India and Europe as well. So yeah, you can find out more on our meetup page. Our next engineering all hands will again be the second Tuesday of the month. So that will be on June something, something, June the what? June the 14th, I believe, where we'll have lots more announcements about cool new stuff in the pipeline. So yeah. Stay tuned. And I guess that's a wrap. Thank you from my side, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Genetastic evening. Good night. Bye bye.